Hey, what's happening out there guys? Welcome back to Rule of Two Review. Today we have some pretty weird news to talk about. So right now there's a whole bunch going on. It's Gamescom week, which is actually really exciting. Gamescom so far has been pretty great. There's a lot of badass stuff coming out of Gamescom actually. Uh, the initial video I was going to make for you guys tonight was going to be about some gaming information, about a couple of games that looked really exciting to me, some new trailers, things that I really, really wanted to discuss and share my opinions on. But then once I saw this piece of news, I felt like this was just a little bit more important, something that I really wanted to share my thoughts about and get it out to you guys and kind of see how everyone was feeling and gauge the reaction to this. I can't really tell if it's as big of a deal in my head uh, as it really is. Like, it's a big deal in my head and I can't tell if it's really that big of a deal, I should say. So, what are we talking about? So, um, the Xbox Games marketing head, whose name is Aaron Greenberg, some of us might know his name, he came out with a statement where he basically said that, uh, he used the quote, the future of the Xbox is without console generations. I think he's actually referring to all console generations. What he's really getting at is that Microsoft is looking at the Xbox Scorpio, which we all know was revealed at E3 a couple of months ago and is now planned to come out by the end of the year next year, 2017, that the Xbox Scorpio is going to potentially mark the beginning of the end of traditional console generations. Um, basically saying that this iter of design where console machines exist the way they do and every few years a newer more slightly more improved version comes out basically he's citing that the difference is everything that currently works on the older hardware of the same kind of machine is still meant to always work going forward for the future of the new iterations of the same machine and that's different than actually going and skipping ahead into a new generation of consoles and hardware now that is true he feels like with the Xbox Project Scorpio, which he very confidently says he thinks will be a success, and that's totally fine for him to say. I actually think he might even be kind of right. He feels like their Scorpio might actually start, basically become the fire starter for this, and it might be what actually starts this trend of traditional consoles going away and the iter of design taking over. Uh, ultimately, I don't really like any of that. So the whole stickiness to this scenario is really what it would mean for traditional console generations to go away and for this iterative design to take over. I feel like I have to keep saying this iterative design, iterative design, but it's really the way that everyone's referring to this. So it might sound kind of repetitive, but there, there's a few things to really come at this from. And it should be known that I'm at the point where specifically where we are right now, I don't, I don't love the idea that the Neo and the Scorpio are coming out at the time that they are and what they represent as just a marginal upgrade to the current consoles as opposed to just new generations. I don't really love that, but when it comes to what's happening right now, the eighth generation is such a weird, confusing, awkward fucking mess of a generation, despite... The fact that I like the consoles and there are so many great games to play, it's weird as shit. This is like the most obscene and unheard of generation I've ever heard of. It's just insane. So because of that, I'm kind of at the point where I'm accepting the fact that the Neo and the Scorpio are coming out. Nintendo's abandoning the Wii U and coming out with their next generation NX very soon. And all three, I've discussed this before in a video, all three current console manufacturers are moving themselves forward into new hardware in different variations. And so simply because the 8th generation is so weird and no one was prepared, I think, for the 8th generation, um, Nintendo, Sony, Microsoft, all of them, no one was freaking prepared. It's like, okay, I'm going to let this one slide at this point. Everyone's got to come out with new hardware. I'm crazy excited for the NX as a huge Nintendo fan. Um, the Neo, I don't really know that I care. The Scorpio, I don't know that I care. I'm curious to see what the Scorpio is. So I, long story short, I'm kind of letting the 8th generation just feel its weird ass self out and just get it over with. Let's get these upgrades and new consoles out and let's just make that the thing that we're doing for the next few years until whatever we can officially call the real 9th generation begins. And that's going to be fine. But this concept of the Scorpio marking the beginning of maybe the end of traditional console generations and this iterative design is supposed to maybe take over down the road, that doesn't seem comfortable to me. Um, and, and I mean, the main problem I think that I think of when, when he says this and why I don't like the idea is right now, the way these iterative designs are being treated and what these upgrades are is so different from how PCs are upgraded and that sort of hardware continues to improve itself as technology gets better. And I think that what he's trying to say is eventually consoles are going to borrow from that same kind of model. And we've heard rumors and theories about that in the past before from folks within the, uh, the video game industry. But that is so different because with a PC, for example, you're only changing individual parts within that machine and you spend as much as you want to spend based on the quality of part that you want to improve and as certain newer models come out and improve 
previous models actually become cheaper and cheaper, but sometimes those cheaper but older models of your graphics card or your sound card or whatever is actually still better than what you may have. And so you can save money by basically piecing it together. Long story short, you piece it together and there's a huge opportunity to spend less money and still improve your gaming experience and your gaming hardware throughout the many years that you're using it. And although I'm not a huge PC guy, I get why that's cool and I get why it's interesting and I totally understand why it makes PC gaming great for people who love it. I don't mind it, I just don't really play on my gaming PC that often. Um, but this, what's happening with the Neo and the Scorpio is not that. They're selling you a brand new, fully priced machine. It's not like, oh, I've got my Xbox One, you know, I spent $400 on my Xbox One. Here comes the new upgraded hardware. I guess, you know, I've got to, got to spend $100 to buy the new thing that makes my Xbox One an Xbox Scorpio so that it's the upgraded version. Oh no, you spent $400 on your Xbox One, you're gonna spend 400 other fucking dollars on your Xbox Scorpio. And same for the PlayStation Neo. And again, I'm kind of giving the 8th generation a pass because the 8th generation is stupid. But going forward, if he's trying to say that that is going to be the consistent console upgrading model for the next whatever, I don't know, 20, 30 years of gaming, and you're not able to feel comfortable, your four and $500 every time you buy a machine is only going to maybe last you two or three years before you have to spend all over again just to get the new hot stuff. That is not okay. Aaron Greenberg and Microsoft and everyone in the gaming industry who might think this is a good idea. I mean, you guys, you rarely see me rant, but I feel kind of rantish about this because I, I like to think I'm a very positive, optimistic guy, when, especially when it comes to gaming. But this doesn't make sense. This is a horrible business model. And I, I, if you would have come out and said something like, you know, what we're doing now is just like the, t the, the testing ground. And down the road, what we envision happening is where you don't have to spend so much money to buy a whole new machine every time, because then you're also making your previous generation obsolete. As someone who buys an Xbox Scorpio, their Xbox One doesn't mean anything. When you upgrade your PC, you keep the things that you need, and they still exist, and you use them, and they have value. But here, it's like, you have your $400 Xbox One, you buy your new $400 Xbox Scorpio, you have an Xbox One. I mean, you can trade it in, but then it's just wasted hardware. It's not actually serving a purpose, and you spent the same amount of money to just replace it with the skeleton of something new and it's not efficient and it is not cost effective and it is not it is not economically healthy for the gamer and the consumer that is the last person that they are thinking of with this kind of business model you guys is us the gamer now a company a gaming company any company can still make certain decisions and sell products with the intent of making money off the consumer absolutely they should do that but you do that within the realm of reason and within the realm of common sense and within the realm of trying to still provide a good service and products to your consumer this model if this exact model the way it's happening with the neo and the scorpio is meant to become the replacement exactly as it is going forward get out of town they don't give two shits about us and that is Honestly, surprising to me if that were to be true, because I like to think that all these people do still understand and like their consumer. And I think that a lot of these companies do seem to treat us, the gamer and the consumer, with a fair amount of respect. And I think that that's important. And I've always appreciated that. If this was the way it was, I do not feel respected with something like this happening. And taking what I've spent the last 30 years of my life as I've been gaming from the 2600 to the 8-bit NES days to the 16-bit to the 32-bit to the 64-bit to the 6th gen to the 7th gen to this weird fucking 8th gen, I've done all of that. And I've known the console generations to happen in a certain way. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that model. For the gamer... There's nothing wrong with that. You guys weren't prepared to make machines that were competent enough to handle what, what developers need out of them nowadays. And that even includes Nintendo and the Wii U as much as I love it. All three of these machines were not prepared for the eighth generation. So you can't take your mistakes and your lack of preparation out on the consumer by changing the whole fucking generation model. And all of a sudden it's like, well, $400 every three years forever. That doesn't make sense. And he tried to put, whoops, he tried, I do that all the time. He tried to put a positive spin on this, by the way, which I do appreciate. I don't want to totally shit on Aaron Greenberg and Microsoft, by the way, because I like Microsoft and I love my Xbox One, but I have to say this. He tried to put this positive spin saying, you know, it's, it's the, another reason why it's different and maybe not as bad as you might think is because Every, all of the software that you have for your current generation Xbox, for example, will continue to work for the new Scorpio and the new models 
always and beyond forever down the road. And that's never going to change, which is different than buying a new generation of console. That is true. And that is a good thing. That's what kind of makes softens the blow of this Scorpio Neo thing that we're running into is like, well, they're saying everything on the PS4 and everything on the Xbox One is supposed to still work on the upgraded models, but you just get a couple of small and performance improvements with the new models if you want to, you know, opt into that with your money. Okay, you got to do this one time. It's stupid, but fine. That's okay. But going forward, that model won't last because let's say you have Halo 5 on your Xbox One now. Sure, your Xbox Scorpio is going to play Halo 5 still. And maybe the Xbox Scorpio 2 will play that as well in another four years. But what about the next Xbox after that? And then the one after that? Is that game, is that, are those consoles still going to be playing everything you've purchased? Your Halo 5 and your Gears of War 4 and your Sunset Overdrive that you have for your Xbox or PlayStation or Nintendo or whatever right now? No, at some point you're going to hit this barrier where the older stuff no longer is working on the new iterations of these consoles. And that is, that is, that basically makes this whole model business model a lie they're basically lying about what they're providing to us and selling us on the benefits of what they're doing so i gotta calm down and i gotta i gotta wrap this up you know whenever i do something this rantish i just uh, i could just go forever and ever on this and i'm gonna come back and end fairly positive and say for right now everything that i was hooting and hollering about excuse me might not even end up to be true. So maybe this was all for naught, and this is just a one-time thing, and he's only theorizing that if the Scorpio and Neo are maybe successful, that some elements of this become adopted by the industry, and they start to kind of do this as a whole. Will it kill console generations as we know them overall? I know that maybe they want that to happen, and it is possible. It's actually very possible that it could happen, but I also think it's possible that it won't. With any luck... Uh, the gamer voice can be strong enough to prevent this from happening. I think we've shown this generation over the last couple of years that the voice of the gamer can actually be very strong, and we can, in fact, inflict change in a great way. And we've done some amazing things, the voice of the gamer. We've changed some pretty bold things in the industry, Microsoft being a perfect example with the DRM and everything they tried to do with the Xbox One initially. So if we really fight back against this, if this turns out to be a bad business practice and the gamer, we don't like it, and if we reach out with our voice and make it heard and known, we may be able to stop this from becoming the norm if, in fact, people don't really like it once it happens. Maybe I'll be in the minority. Maybe everyone will be like, this is great. I love spending $400 every three years. Yeah, money is stupid. And if that happens, I'm just the one sitting here yelling into a microphone about it and no one really agrees with me. But I feel that most people will agree with me and and understand why this could be a potential problem. So maybe it won't happen. I'm, I'm curious and excited enough to see what the Scorpio really is like and what Microsoft is trying to do here. I like my PlayStation 4, so I'm really curious to see what the Neo is going to be like too. So this is all now experimental, so let's just see what this petri dish of video game crap actually turns up. But this, I think, is an unsafe, unhealthy business model for the gaming consumer in the future. I just don't feel comfortable with it. So... That's that. That's my ranting about this crazy, weird information that came out today. Um, Again, this really isn't supposed to be so directed at Aaron Greenberg and Microsoft because I I like both of them. I I know uh, Aaron Greenberg has been important in the past, and I've really liked what Microsoft has been doing and the the decisions they've been making the last couple of years. I think the Xbox One is actually a great machine. So... It's not so directed at them, but it's more directed at the concept that was brought out, brought up by Aaron Greenberg from Microsoft at Gamescom this week. So what the holy hell? Tell me what you guys think about this below. Am I a nutbag? Did you just see 15 minutes of a, a crazy man just yelling about nothing important? Or do you see kind of where I'm coming from and the potential harm that this could do down the road if this really became the norm and they didn't at least adapt it to make it more beneficial and economically safe for the gamer? Tell me what you guys think about all this stuff tomorrow um, or sometime this weekend. I might try to get my uh, video about the video games uh, from Gamescom out this week. I really do want to talk about the games themselves, but I had to get this conversation out. So tell me what you guys think about this crazy stuff below. Thanks as always for tuning in. This is Rob of Rule of Two Review, and I'll catch you guys next time on another video.